So in this tutorial we're going to look at using the spinal blend feature to uh, close the lid on this uh, simple box that we've designed. Uh, the box incorporates a living hinge into the design. You can see the geometry of that here, which is a simple plastic uh, flexible hinge that you find in a lot of uh, packaging these days. So the first thing that you need to do uh, when you're defining a spinal blend, uh, spinal bend, sorry, is uh, you need to define the shape of the bend. Uh, and I've done that here just uh, using a simple sketch. So the sketch has been created on the uh, plane that bisects this box, so it'll be the right hand plane here. And if we just drop into that sketch, we'll just have a quick look at the geometry that's been created. So the first thing that I did was create a uh, geometry center line which was sat on the top edge of the box there so you can see that uh, it's had a constraint applied to it that keeps it on the top edge of the box. Uh, the next thing that I did was uh, sketch this uh, lower horizontal line here and then uh, put a constraint on the end of that so that it uh, it follows this front edge of the box. So the end point of that line is always on the front edge of the box. And then if we uh, go to the other end of that line, uh, that line extends past the back edge of the box and uh, is then mirrored about the centre line and then there's a tangential arc joining the two together so there's a tangent constraint there which uh, keeps the arc tangent to both lines so as you can see uh, these lines pass through the uh, geometry of the part and through the geometry of the hinge as well so if we get out of the sketch there and start creating the spinal bend now the spinal bend tool is in the uh, insert menu and then the advanced sub menu at the bottom and spinal bend. Uh, for this particular case we'll just leave the options in their uh, default settings click on done and what it's asking for here it's saying uh, select quilt or solid to be bent so there's only one solid uh, in this particular part file so we'll click anywhere on the solid and then it's saying select a chain option from the menu so it wants you to select a, a chain chain of edges or a, a sketch uh, we'll use the one by one option and if we zoom in so that we can see our sketch more clearly we want to pick the first edge of the sketch so we've got that there in red hold down control and click on the next edge so we've got the curve at the back there and then hold down control again and get the final edge so you can see we've picked the bottom the uh, arc joining the two together and then we pick the top as well so if we OK that just check that the start point is where we expect it to be that's fine so click on done uh, now what it's asking us it's uh, asking us to define the extent of the bend how much of the uh, solid object do we want to uh, apply the bend to we want to put, apply it to all so it's put a, an initial datum plane at one end of our sketch where the start point is and we want to make a second datum plane which is parallel to the first one so we click on parallel select the first datum and then our next datum, as well as being parallel to the first one, we want it to go through this edge at this end of the box. So I clicked on through and then this edge. And that's everything that you need to do to create the bend. So you click on done and lo and behold the bend's been created. So we can see that the hinge has been deformed. You can see the hinge geometry a little bit better there. Uh, it's being curled round on it on itself until the two halves meet uh, as it would be uh, in real use 
and you can see that the top and the bottom of the box are now sat against each other. Uh, so that's the uh, spinal bend uh, feature.